this time in worship, Father, and I thank you that you will not fail, that you cannot fail. Father, and I pray that no matter what happens today, Father, that we remember that you won't fail us. And if you won't fail us, we can't fail. Amen. Father, I thank you that our foundation is firm in you, Father, and that you love us and you're with us always. I pray today, Father, that you open hearts and minds and ears of those that need to hear, Father. I pray for peace for me, and I pray that you just get me out of the way and you bring your word, because it's not about me, but it's all about you. Amen. And Father, I thank you that you are going to move. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. Thank you, Father. I just praise you and thank you. <laughs> thank you, Father. I just praise you. And I thank your holy name as you come today, as you always do. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. <laughs> My name is Brandy, for those of you that don't know me, and I am super nervous, but I promise that the Holy Spirit will take over in a minute, and I will calm down a little bit. Whew, I just got to get myself out of the way a little bit. Um, God is so good, guys. <laughs> My name is Brandy. I am a mom. I have two amazing boys. They are grown now, unfortunately, but good. At the same time, I don't really know, but they are awesome. Byron and Clayton. Um, I'm so proud of them. <laughs> yeah, that is my son that is yelling back there. He is crazy. It is fine. He's okay. <laughs> we don't take him into stores anymore, though, let me tell you that. <laughs> he knows how to embarrass his mother in a second by being loud. But I love him. I love both of them. I am very blessed. I get to see and talk to them almost every single day, even as adults, and they bless me all the time. I also have an amazing husband, of course. Um, Brandon's in the booth today. He is hes really awesome. He puts up with my crazy, because I am crazy. Um, and he spoils me all the time, and that's OK. My dad told him before my dad passed, my dad told him, like, it's your job now to spoil her. And so he gets to spoil me every single day. He does. He has carried that very, very well. Um, some days I think he regrets it, because I'm a little too spoiled, but that's OK. <laughs> by trade I am a counselor I own a counseling agency I've been doing that for like 13 years now and I love it I love what I do um, God took me into it a little later in life um, but I, I love it I love helping people and women and kids and just love my day I get to speak the word of God into people that may not have ever heard it before kind of around the back a little bit sometimes but like I still get to do it and so that's really really cool and if nothing else, like, I get to show them the love of God in different ways. And so that's really cool. Um, I have a lot of people come into my office, and they've been, like, hurt by the church or, or hurt or they don't believe. And so I get to kind of talk that into their lives and show them a different aspect of it. And so that's a really cool ministry for me. My husband and I were um, uh, youth pastors for seven years. Seven years. Um, and now we do conferences. Um, we put together conferences. Um, I do a women's conference, and he does a, well, we do a women's conference and a men's conference, and looking to add our third conference in the next year or two. Um, so we love what we do. Um, we came to Faith Fellowship a year and a half ago. A year and a half ago, I looked to him for all my answers. <laughs> um, a year, I'm sorry, I looked to God for all my answers, and then I looked, okay, but anyway. Um, so we came to Faith Fellowship about a year and a half ago, and let me tell you, it was beautiful. I'm so glad that God has brought us here for this season of our life. Um, we have been blessed beyond measure, and this is a great home for us now. Um, in the last week itself, I've had so many women reach out to me and say, hey, I'm praying for you. I'm excited. You know, I feel very supported at home here. I'm a cry. I don't know why. <laughs> And I always forget the waterproof, so it's fine. <laughs> when pastor asked me to do this, one, I'm just going to say without looking at anyone that I was not the first one that was asked, and that's okay. <laughs> I'm the one that said yes. And let me tell you that story for a second. I said yes before I thought about it. So I said yes at the same time my brain was screaming, what are you thinking? <sighs> so... Here 
I am, I caught back into the conversation a couple minutes later after my brain was done screaming at me about what was I thinking, and I'd already said yes, so you can say no to pastor again, so here I am. <gasps> so I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm going to be honest and straightforward from the front. I am stubborn. He knows that about me, and he knows how to yell at me and to, like, sit back and just laugh at me and shake his head because he knows he's going to win. And so... <laughs> That's just the way we kind of talk and we banter all day long and, and that's fine. He's used to me and that's cool. And, and I keep telling him I'll get better about it and I will. Um, I'm getting there. I'm a work in progress. And so a few years ago, I actually told him, I'm like, okay, God, I'm, I'm done. I'm not going to argue with you anymore. Okay, I'm not going to argue with him. I'm working on it. But I told him, I'm done. Whatever you ask me to do, I'm going to say yes. Whatever it is, I'm not going to argue. I'm not going to doubt. I'm just going to say yes and step forward, which isn't that what we should do all the time, right? I struggle, but I'm working. I'm a work in progress. So I said yes, and so this was one of those moments where I said yes before I really thought about it, and so here I am. But he does great things when we just... <laughs> so I started trying to put it together, and I was trying to put it together in what I thought it should be, right? It wasn't working. So a couple days later... Um, I saw this, this video, I started, I, I'm on like media all the time and like media, putting media stuff together and anyway, I saw this, this video in my head, hey cool, um, I saw this video in my head that the Lord started putting and, and placing and making for me and so that's where I started which is really weird and then he's just kind of like progressed it along the way, it's not a typical Mother's Day message and so sorry not sorry, I do what God wants to do, so here we are. Um, so we're going to start... What we're kind of doing today is talking about, just so everyone can see in a second, talking about the inside, and I'm going to say the mom's mind, and I'm using it from like the inside of my mind, but it could be in a lot of people's mind, right? Our minds are messy, and they're crazy, and they get confused and loud and overwhelming, and there's so much in this world going on all the time. So I started putting together this video about what does it look like? <laughs> really scary. What does it look like in my mind in any given moment? So typically, like, I'm really bad about my brain. It's really bad about I'll wake up in the middle of the night or really early in the morning and it starts going. And it starts with something really simple like, hey, Brandy, don't forget tomorrow you're going to, you promise you're going to spend more time with God, right? I had to start with a God thing. And so, and then it's Mother's Day, so can we start the video? And then it's Mother's Day, so then it's like, hey, and don't forget, you got to call your mom. Because I had a nightmare like two days ago that I forgot to call my mom on Mother's Day. It was really, really bad. So, and then it starts with like something else. And then I don't remember what the next thing is on there. Pay the water bill, because I always forget to pay the water bill. I don't know what it is about the water bill. I always forget to pay the water bill. And don't forget the milk, you know, and the bread. And what are we going to make for dinner? And like, it goes on and on. And before you know it, it gets quicker and faster. And the things keep coming into my head and my brain is getting overloaded, and there's so much in there at some point that I can't even read it all or make sense of all anymore. Because that to-do list and that don't forget list and that all that stuff is overwhelming in my head, and so there's all this noise. And so then before you know it, my brain is like, why you're here, let's talk about everything you've ever done wrong and everything you should be doing different and all the ways that you could fail. And then here comes the stress, and here comes the anxiety, and here comes the depressive thoughts, and here comes all the things, and my brain is just like overdone. <laughs> so that is my brain on any given moment you could ask some of my employees there I have a couple of employees here and so like you could ask some of them like they can tell when my brain is in the state like and they're like they'll they'll put their head in their in my room really really gently they'll go Brandy do you have any brain space and so like <laughs> they know there are moments that they just walk away and so these are moments when I'm in the wrong brain space, right? Because my brain is so loud. There's so much noise going on in my head. And there's so many to-do things. Can anyone else relate to this or is this just me? Wow. Okay, good. <laughs> so I'm not the only, the only person in here. So know this, that when I preach, 90 to 95% of the time, God is doing it to preach to me, right? So this was all for me. <laughs> so I, 
Not that I haven't heard it before because I'm a stubborn child, but he has to tell me again. So this is my brain on any given moment. And so I start my day, and I'm walking through my day, and it feels like I'm walking through mud because my brain is overwhelmed and there's so much to do and I can't even make sense of it all and I'm knee deep to waist deep in mud trying to just put one foot in front of the other and so by the time it gets to the end of the day, take that back. By the time it gets to noon, I'm exhausted <laughs> and I'm worn out and I'm overwhelmed and I'm stressed and the anxiety has set in and all the worries and fears have set in and all the things are loud and there's so much noise in my head. And really, I'm not getting anything done. I'm working nonstop, but I'm not really accomplishing anything because I'm just trudging through the mud step by step, minute by minute, because life is overwhelming yeah. when it looks like this, yeah. right? Yeah. So by the time like we get to this place, we're overthinking things and we're trying to make sense of things, and we're trying to take control of it, and we're trying to make it better, but the thing is we're trying to do it in our own way. We're trying to do it ourselves. We're trying to make it better. And instead of making it better, the noises get louder. And so then we realize, like, this, this happened to me last week, the week before, I don't remember, and I was having a conversation with someone that was in my office, and, and it wasn't a client, it was an employee, just so you know. And so um, I'm having a conversation with a employee in my office. So, and, and I've seen this over time, so we get a lot of kids in our office and one of the things that I hear from the kids all the time is my parents are so busy. Over and over and over again, every single time I interview a kid, a teenager, a little kid, it doesn't matter, my kids are too, my parents are too busy. They're too busy. They're so busy. And they've learned to excuse that and be okay with that. They've learned to adapt to that, which is great that they're adaptable. However, then they say, what I really want is to spend more time with my parents. Even teenagers, guys. What I really want is for my parents to hear me. So often I see the parents, they, they come into the office and they're sitting there with their kids and a couple of things happen. One, they learn something about their kids that they didn't know that they probably should have known because they weren't really paying attention. And not always, guys, because kids are good at hiding things. But then two, they aren't really listening to what the kids are saying. They're so busy over-talking the kids. They're so busy thinking about what they're going to say to defend themselves. They're so busy with their to-do list. They're so busy doing this on their phone in between things and then saying things sporadically that they're not really in the room. It doesn't just happen with parents, guys. It happens with my couples. It happens with individuals. It happens with everyone. I see that, like, everywhere we go. Like, we can be at a restaurant, and Brandon and I will comment on this all the time. We'll be at the restaurant, and the couples will be sitting there in the booth, and they'll both be going like this. And sometimes they'll look up at each other and they'll say something, but then they'll go like this. This is just adding noise to your head. And I know a lot of times they think that they're like fixing that to-do list or they're working on that to-do list or they're, I am guilty of this. They think they're replying to that email to get it out of their thought or that text to get it out of their thought or whatever it is to mark it off their list so that they can calm down and be present in the moment. But really what they're doing is adding to the noise. Because there's always one more email, there's always one more text, there's always one more social media post, there's always one more something. And so we're just adding to the noise. I don't remember where I was going with that. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I think that was free. I don't think that's even in my notes, guys. But the noise is so loud that we miss our, the moments in life. We miss what's really going on around us. We miss what our kids are doing in the room while we're sitting there with them because we're busy trying to get our to-do list done when really does half of that to-do list really matter? Does half of that noise really matter? Are those doubts and fears real? Are we focused on the right thing? And so the noise gets louder because we continue to try to fix the to-do list and we continue to try to fix all of these things and make the stress less and all the things when really what we're doing is making the noise louder. And we fight 
to make it better, and again, it gets louder. And a lot of times it gets so loud that we don't even hear what the Holy Spirit is trying to say to us anymore. Because we're so lost in this mess in our head that we have, I lost that word again, quench, 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 sorry, I've lost that word 10 times today, quenched the Holy Spirit, something we've been talking about the last couple of days because we're so lost in the mess in our head. Are these things real? Yeah. But we have them out of order. And we've let them overcome. And so we've been overtaken by the things that are to do of this world and then the thing, instead of the things that are to do of our Heavenly Father. And so it gets louder. And it gets more messy. And it gets more in control. And we lose track of where we are. And we lose track of who we were meant to be. Because after you've trudged in mud all day long, knee-deep mud, all day long, you are a shell of yourself. You are no longer who you were created to be, but you're a shell of who you were created to be. We weren't made to be stressed and full of anxiety and full of depression and full of all the things. This is not how we were created to be. We were created to be a child of the king of all kings. We were created to be movers and shakers. We were created to be peaceful and joyful and happy, and this does not take you to that road. So instead, we try to do it ourselves, and it gets louder, and then we don't hear the Holy Spirit, and it gets louder, and it just gets louder, and it gets louder, and it gets messier, and we get lost in it. We've gotten so lost in it that we have forgotten that we are movers and shakers. We've forgotten that we're supposed to be outside of these four walls. We've forgotten that we're supposed to be preaching the gospel and sharing the gospel and helping others. And guys, we've lost a generation or two along the way. I see them in my office. Guys, they've lost who they are. They've lost their identity. They've lost their identity because they don't know who they were made to be in Christ because we're busy in our own mess. We're busy in our own noise. And we have to break out of that noise. There's a reason they're searching for identity. There's a reason there's an identity crisis. It's because we aren't being loud enough and breaking out of our noise to break through their noise to tell them who they are in Christ. They are children of the king, but they don't know that. And so they're searching for anything to fill that void. There's so many lost people out there, but we're busy in our own world, and we're missing the moments that God is putting in front of us. And we're not being who we were created to be. Our Heavenly Father has so much for you, but you have to break through the noise and you have to make time for him. So when I started going through scripture and looking for what I wanted to share with you today and some advice to give you, there were lots of things that came up. Did you know? So wait, I'm back up for a second. So... I'm a counselor, and when you're coming through counseling, like when you're getting your master's degree, they teach you a whole bunch of theory, right? And it's boring. And it's really, like, I'm just honest, it's boring. And it's secular, and it's world-built. And I really struggled with that in school, right? And so it was hard for me, but I've been doing it now for 13, 14 years, something like that, I don't know. And what I've learned is that really all of these secular, worldly theories actually have biblical foundations. The world just doesn't see it that way, right? So they think that they created this new thing, and it's great and awesome and wonderful, and it came from them, and it's not of God. And so they say that they take God and spirituality out of counseling. Mm -hmm. Sorry, you don't. Because one, everything of this world is, you know, comes from him. But two, somewhere along the way, it, it really is biblical. So one of the things that we use a lot is, and I'm not going to go really into depth into it, but it's, it's called CBT. It's cognitive behavioral therapy. Like, it's really big. You have to use it. It's one of these things. But anyway, so it's supposedly the secular theory, right, that comes from the world and has no spiritual value. Mm, wrong. So what it does is, one, it looks at your core, and it, it goes to, like, we have 
like these core thoughts and beliefs of ourselves. And so it goes into that and it changes that core belief of you, right? Like it helps you understand who you really are and it helps change it to a more positive perspective, right? We are children of God. If that is our core, if we filter everything through that, okay. So it changes your core, helps you understand who you are. Well, we are children of God. And then what it does is it starts taking those thoughts, those, like, we call them negative automatic thoughts, those negative thoughts that you have about yourself or of your day, and it helps you change them into more positive thought processes, right? And so you're changing the negative into the positive. You're changing the way you think about things. You're changing the way you filter things. So when you stop and you know that you're the child of God, when you meditate on God, when you spend time with God, doesn't that do that for you automatically? Yes. Just saying. <laughs> so one of the things that I wanted to talk about today, one of the first scriptures that came to me was um, Psalm 48.10. Did I say that? Did I get that right? I didn't write it down. I just know what it is. Um, so be still and know that I am God, right? We all know that one. And there's more to it. It's a whole scripture. That whole chapter is really great, by the way. But um, be still and know that I am God use that all the time, love that scripture, but it's always kind of been like, okay, cool, I'm going to be still and know that you are a God, and I, so I know that you have control of it, but I know that as a Christian, as a child of God, I'm not really supposed to be still. So what are you really telling me? So I went to do some research on it, learned that in Bible school, don't ever just give the scripture, always do the research, so did some research, and what I found was that the word be still in the actual original translation does not actually mean be still. Did you know that? Anyone know that? Am, am I the only one learning this today? That was so cool realization for me. So, but what it really means, ah, this is not in my notes. Sorry. What? What it really means is to stop striving, to snap out of it, to wake up, to stop fearing, to wake up and remember who you are. So be still and know that I'm God. Wake up, snap out of it. Snap out of this fog, this mess, this noise that's in your head, and remember that he is God. Change your focus to him. This gets taken care of. When we focus on him, so think about when... We talk about it all the time in songs, right? Like, keep your eyes above the waves sort of thing. So no matter how wavy it is, no matter how rocky it is, if you keep your eyes on him, you're going to stay above the water. You're going to stay above the chaos. You're going to stay above the noise. But you have to keep your eyes on him. You have to snap out of this. Because this is not important. It is, but it's not. God will take care of this if you put him first in your focus. But we have to put him first in our focus. A way to stop, I missed this second ago, a way to stop the anxiety and the fear and the, I teach my clients this all the time, to stop the anxiety and the fear and the depression and, and all those things. Once One is the, the core and the thought process, but another is you have to stop feeding the monster. So I call it a monster. Fear, anxiety, stress, all of those things that are like a monster. And the more you feed them, the bigger they grow. And the more space they take in your head. And the more space they take in your life until they overcome. And you're full of so much noise and stress and anxiety that you can't even take a step forward. And so you have to stop feeding the monster. You have to be still. You have to snap out of it. But to do that, you have to change your focus. You have to remember who God is. You have to remember who you are created to be. You are created to be the child of the king of all kings. You are created to be royalty. You are created for so many amazing things, but we have to get out of the noise. You have to break through that noise. You have to let that go. So much easier to say than to do. I get it. So there are over, one of the ways to change your focus is to focus, and, and you've heard this from pastors for years and years, I am so sure, but is to change your focus, is to focus on scripture. One of the things we did when we were, um, youth pastors, is that we made our kids, they had these little notebooks, and we made them 
um, take a scripture or two every week, and they had to put it into their own words. Because I can read scripture all day long, but if it doesn't mean anything to me, it doesn't matter. Like, I'm not going to remember it. It's not going to go into my heart. I'm not going to take it with me. So you have to make it your own. And that's just part of studying the word. That's free, by the way. It's not in my notes anywhere because I've lost where I was, and so I'm really sorry. There are over 8,000 promises of God in the Bible. So here's my challenge to you. My challenge to you, one of my challenges to you, is to spend the first 10, 15 at minimum minutes of your day quiet with God, studying the word. Take a scripture, take a promise that you need that day and make it yours. Make it meaningful to you. Say it out loud. Make it part of your morning, like this is my pep up talk to myself every morning on the way to work. So I have one. I have a, a pep up talk that I give to myself every morning on the way to work. And it's scripture verses that I put in my own words and made them mine, right? And they empower me and remind me of some of God's promises to me. You have to start getting the Bible into you. You have to make it part of you. And if you don't make it part of you, it's just words on a book. And then you get lost in the noise. And this is what happens when we get lost in the noise. When, so if you notice, the very first thing that came up in the video was spend time with God. But yet that was quickly overridden by all these other things that came up. We have to stop letting all the other things that come up override spending time with God. And we have to make him a priority. So when, when this starts happening in my day, in my world, some of the things, like if I will just stop and take five minutes in my office and put on some worship music and pull out the Bible or a scripture or just spend some quiet time with him for like five minutes, it's amazing how much my day changes. The peace comes. And this makes sense again. Because right now this doesn't make any sense. Right? And this is just chaos. And I'm just trudging through the mud. And I'm not getting anything done. But if I can recenter myself, if I can refocus myself, it all calms. And it makes sense again. And things start flowing again. Because I moved my eyes from the, from the chaos and the waves to above the waves. I put my eyes back on him. So if we can learn that, it's easy to get caught up in this. We're all going to get caught up in this sometimes, right? We're not perfect. I am so not perfect. So we're going to get caught up in this. And that's okay. Because God knows that we're not perfect. But we got to learn how to refocus and bring it back. We have to bring it back to where we're supposed to be. Because when we can change our focus, we can move mountains. And we can find that peace. And we can remember who we were meant to be, who we were created to be, because this is not who we were created to be. So we've got to stop this noise, and we have to break through it. There are over 8,000 promises in the Bible that God gives us, and I'm not going to read them all. So you're lucky, but not, because you missed some of them, but it's fine. So find them all. But um, I wrote this on the side, and, I, and I, I'm going to put it out to you. Do you know more promises of the Bible, more of who God tells you that you are, than you know about social media followers, influencers, whatever they're called? I'm sorry, I'm not hip and young. I don't. Sorry, guys. Sorry. Um, do you know more about that than you do the TV show that you're watching? Do you know more about that than whatever it is that you guys are into now? Because I'm sorry, I don't know. I'm trying to keep up. Um, I'm going to leave you with a few. I'm going to give you a few. So Philippians 41.9 says that he will strengthen you. Mark 11.24 says that he will answer your prayers. Hebrews 13.5 says that he will be with you. Matthew 6.25.33 says he will take care of all of your needs. And Jeremiah 29.11 says that he will prosper you. Those are just a handful. It's just the very, very, very beginning of what he says. Okay, so in just those few things, he is going to strengthen you, answer your prayers, be with you, take care of you, and prosper you. 
How awesome is that? And that's like, this, that's like, that's not even a page of this, guys. There's so much more in here. But are you using it to quiet the sound? Are you using it to break through the noise? Are you using it to remind yourself of who you are? Are you using it to find your confidence? Are you using it to be movers and shakers? To find this lost generation that we've lost? If you're using it, it's evident in your life. I um, want to leave you with, I have a little more video, and it's just a, a little thing about um, I'm so sorry, guys, God is talking to me, and I am trying to, and I'm trying to be still so I can hear him through my nerves. You were not created to be the shell. You were not created to be the stressed out, anxious, depressed person. You were not created. <laughs> you were not created to carry these hurts. You were not created to feel like you are walking through mud. You were not created to be less than. You were created to be the head and not the tail. You were created to be royalty. You were created to be the child of the king. And some of you are not walking like you were created that way. You are carrying these backpacks of hurt. You are carrying the stress and anxiety with you. You are carrying so much stuff with you that you don't have to carry. And it's time to leave it here because it's not yours. The enemy should have no power or control over to you. You break that off right now because he is here to prosper you. He is here to care for you and protect for you, protect you. So let it go. You claim that power that you have because the Bible says we have power over our enemy. God is victorious, so you are victorious. So you claim that victory because so many of you are not claiming that victory. Even in this building, I see some of you walk in. Oh, I'm sorry. I don't know where this is coming from. So, yes, I do, but, like, I'm sorry. Not sorry. But um, I see some of you sometimes come through here even, and you look like you have been beaten up. Be done with that. Is life hard? Yeah. Life is hard sometimes. I'm done. Yeah. It stinks. But that's okay because my God is bigger. My God is greater, and I am his daughter. This is not who you were created to be. Stop it! Stop it! I'm so tired. I'm so tired of seeing people come into my office and go, I have so much anxiety, I can't even make it through my day. Stop it! That's all I want to say to them is like, stop! You weren't created for that. That's not yours. Tell the enemy he has to go. Amen. You have that power. Yes. Yes. So tell him to go. Yes. That was all free. Yes. Bonus. <laughs> I don't know, guys. I don't know where that... Um, <laughs> I don't know where I'm at now. Who cares? Um... I don't even know, I I can't really see the time, I don't know what time it is, I don't care. Um, Here's what I want to do, I don't know where I'm in my notes, I don't know if I'm done, (laughs) we're just going to say it. So they're going to play the rest of the videos, the rest of the video is just part of kind of my thing that I say on my way to work, I have so much more, so on my way to work, I, like I already told you, but that's just part of it, and so I wanted to speak that over you guys before the end of the day today, but as that's playing, what I want to do, I want to invite you, so if you, one, if you don't know my Jesus, if you don't have a relationship with him, if you don't know that you're the child of the king, I want you up here. Let's pray for you. Let's get that taken care of first because that's the one most important thing in all of the world. And so one person is saved. (gasps) I'm breathing hard. Okay, I I ran out of breath. (laughs) So when one person is saved, like they celebrate in heaven. So let's celebrate. Let's cause a celebration today, one. And you're going to make your mama happy. So cool. Um, (laughs) 
And then two, if you're struggling, if you're struggling to let go of that anxiety, that depression, that stress, if you feel beaten up, if you feel worn, if you feel like you are not the child of the king of all kings, if you can't get through that, if you can't fight, or if you can't tell the enemy of go, walk your feet up here and let's take care of that today too. So I'm going to play the video and I'm going to get some music from somewhere. I'm sorry that I was not prepared for this and we're going to pray some stuff out of here today. Okay? 